Soft bodies can be used to simulate many cool things, from jelly being squished to cars being deformed in crashes. In my last video, I created this soft body physics engine to simulate a soft body Tetris game. It used particles connected to each other by constraints, which basically just maintained the distance between two particles by pulling them together if they get too far and pushing them apart if they get too close. This was cool, but in this video, I want to make it a lot more stable and versatile with the goal of simulating 3D soft bodies eventually. Right now, it can only support these simple structures, which I have to make by hand. When I try to make a more complex shape, it just collapses on itself. This is because the only shape which is able to maintain all of its angles is a triangle. So in order to simulate more complex shapes, I will need a way to turn it into a bunch of triangles. So I was already using a triangulation technique called ear clipping in my last video to make a mesh to render the soft bodies. So I thought I'd try using this same technique to generate internal connections between the points. This worked, but the triangles it generated were not great. The problem with these triangles is that they don't comply with the Delaunay condition. The Delaunay condition means that no point should be inside another triangle's circumcircle, which is the circle that goes through all three points of the triangle. This sounds simple enough, but figuring out how to code a Delaunay triangulator is actually really hard. So for now, I just downloaded a C -sharp implementation of it, but later I'll try to make my own. Now these triangles that generated are a little better, but the great thing about Delaunay triangulation is that it can have points inside the shape. So by placing extra points evenly spaced within the shape, it generates a full internal structure, which makes the soft bodies behave pretty realistically. However, we still have this problem where the structure collapses in on itself when it's under a little too much pressure. Let's take a look at what's causing this. So each triangle is connected by three constraints, which only care about the distance between their two points. So triangles can be flipped inside out like this, and all of their constraints would still be satisfied. Until now, I've tried to ignore this problem because I've had no idea how to solve it, but I finally figured out how to fix it. The solution was to add a new constraint. Each triangle will have an area constraint. The area constraint tries to maintain the area of a triangle by pushing each point away from the opposite line if the area is too small, or pulling it in if the area is too large. When the triangle goes inside out, the area will become negative and it will push the points back to the original position. Now, this is what the triangles look with only the area constraint. And this is what they look like with the area and distance constraints. Now it maintains its shape perfectly no matter what. I was actually so surprised that I got this to work, but now finally my soft bodies never break. For objects with permanent deformations, I just reduced the area constraint a little so that it can crumple into itself, and I thought this looked pretty cool. There is still one problem though. The Delaunay triangulation algorithm I downloaded only makes convex shapes. To triangulate concave shapes, I'll need to implement constrained Delaunay triangulation myself. Here's how that works. It starts with one really big triangle, which contains all of the points. Then I add each point in one at a time. When a new point is added, it checks if it's inside any triangle's circumcircle. And if it is, then those triangles are deleted and the hole is filled by three new triangles like this. Once all of the points are in, I get rid of the super triangle and anything connected to it. Now we have the convex hull of the points. Now to make it concave, I just add in constrained edges and then flip any triangles that intersect it. Now I can make any shape I want, even if it's not convex. So I used this to remake my Tetris pieces, but with way more points this time. 
Each piece has around 30 points, 60 distance constraints, and 95 triangles. It runs smoothly on my computer with about 15 pieces, but with any more it slows down. The cause of this is all of the expensive collision checks, because for each possible collision it has to check for an intersection against every edge in the soft body. I've done a lot of optimization, and I'll try more in the future, but for now I think this is okay. To render the soft bodies to the screen, I just make a mesh with all the soft body points as vertices and the triangles from my Delaunay triangulation. But right now my soft bodies don't really look any like anything, they're just colored shapes, so I want to put a picture on top of my soft bodies and have it deform with it. I found this picture of a trash can and I want to turn it into a soft body. I made a material with a can as the texture and put it on a quad, and I used this as a reference as I made the soft body. As I place each point, they get assigned a UV coordinate between 0 and 1, which corresponds to a part of the texture. Now when I add the texture to the soft body's material, it renders the image and deforms with the points. The result is just like what I wanted, and I'm really happy with how it looks. This is what it looks like with stiff constraints and a little plasticity. I also added a rubber duck. I made it with a simple mesh, but the deformation still looks good. Now that I have a really stable and versatile 2D softbody engine, I think I'm ready to try it to make it 3D. My first idea was to take all of the vertices and edges from a mesh and make it into a softbody, but this doesn't really work. The problem is that when you import a mesh into Unity, each face uses separate vertices so that they can have different normals and UV coordinates, but this causes the faces to fall apart when I try to simulate them. I wrote a script to merge identical vertices while still keeping the triangles intact. Now I can simulate this cube, but if I turn the stiffness down, or try to simulate a different mesh, it'll collapse. So, I'll need to generate an internal structure, so it can keep its shape. Just like how in 2D, everything had to be made out of triangles, in 3D, everything has to be made out of tetrahedrons, which is just a shape made out of 4 points. I could use a third party program to tetrahedralize the mesh, but I want to keep my assets self-contained, so I'll have to just do it myself. I already made a Delaunay triangulator, so I didn't think it would be too hard to extend it to the third dimension. However, this is the mesh that I want to tetrahedralize, but it has way too many vertices and we don't need that much detail to simulate a convincing softbody. So before I code a tetrahedralizer, I need to simplify it. I did some research and found a method to simplify meshes. The first step of it is to find the shortest edge of the mesh, then merge its two vertices into one at the middle. Then remove any triangles which were destroyed and repeat the process until the mesh is simplified enough. This works really well. Anyways, it turns out that tetrahedrons are a lot more complicated than triangles, and I was unsuccessful in making a usable tetrahedralizer. So, I chose to try another approach. Instead of making the tetrahedrons directly from the mesh, I can voxelize the mesh, and then turn each cube into five tetrahedrons like this. This approach has some cons, but it's very simple and good enough for now. So to start, I made this cube and manually tetrahedralized it, using this picture as a reference. Then I added a distance constraint for each edge and a volume constraint for each tetrahedron, which works just like my 2D area constraint. Then I wrote some code to voxelize a mesh by checking if any points on a grid lie within the mesh, and if they do, add a tetrahedralized cube at that position.
Checking if a point is inside the mesh is slow, so to speed up the process, I generated a low poly version of my duck using my code and then I ran the algorithm. To render a mesh inside of my tetrahedralized soft bodies, I can use barycentric coordinates, which I learned about from this video. What this does is match every vertex of the visual mesh with the closest tetrahedron in the soft body, and then every frame keep its position the same relative to the four points of its assigned tetrahedron. This allows me to match high quality visual meshes with lower quality tetrahedral meshes and simulate it in real time. And now finally, putting it all together, this is what it looks like. I also got a car model, and this is what it looks like with plasticity. If you've noticed the lag in some of these clips, Know that I optimized some of the code to run in parallel using Unity's job system, and now it runs at above 100 FPS at most times. I'll continue developing this in the future, but that's all for now. This took a lot of work, so I'd appreciate if you left a like on this video and subscribe to see more. But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.